Welcome to my DIY at home bow shop. Welcome. To start off with, this bow shop was not this clean to begin with 24 hours ago. I spent a good couple hours cleaning the disaster. It normally looks like this. So you guys have motivated me to clean. So I got the question not too long ago, ding, about what my bow shop's like in here. It wanted me to light it up so you guys could all see it. So I figured I'd give you a little bit of a tour. First things first, this has been a work in progress for a long time, almost 10 years now, moving from houses and now I've got this area that I've built up inside of this barn and I'm almost have it completely how I, I want it. Uh, but at the end, I'll tell you kind of some of the things I would like to see changed, just to be clear. Don't think you need all this stuff to start out with. Don't think you need all this stuff to start out with. I'm gonna get you off of the stand and I'm gonna actually show you around a little bit here. So first things first, my most pride and joy of the bow shop is my beaver back here. I love this beaver, <laughs> trapped myself. Um, but we're gonna start off simple. I, for a long time, did not have a bow press like this one. This is the, the Last Chance Ar Archery Easy Green and I did not start off with this bow press. I actually started off with, hold the phone. This unit right here. Uh, this is the uh, Bowmaster Press. It's a little cable unit, uses leverage, kind of put it through the cams, not the cams, but the limb brakes. Worked well for a lot of years, probably. Uh, I used that for about seven years and I could get everything I needed to get done with it for the most part. So I switched to this Easy Green. And the Easy Green has been working fantastically for me, fantastically. I just finally actually got that just about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now. So now I've been able to really just kind of do everything I want to. Still kind of need to retrofit some stuff depending on the bow I put in here. I should get the attachments, some new attachments that they've made for it. So I would highly recommend the Easy Green, but if you're just starting off, that Bowmaster Press is perfectly fine. With that said, I'm gonna probably put all of these things that I've got in here that I enjoy in links below, probably somewhat affiliated links, but hey, what the heck, you know, at least you'll know where to get them. After we move away from the bow press, probably the second thing that's probably the most important thing in the shop is my bow vise. And this is also by Last Chance Archery. This is the Easy Green Bow Vise. It's nothing super expensive. It's like right down the middle of the road, but it works great for the price. And I had an old one, a different bow vise back in the day. You can kind of see this down here. It had a, like a C clamp that went to it and it was just horrible. It was, it worked. I could make it work. I could make about anything work but that was slowly bending the C-clamp and everything else. So I switched over to this Easy Green bow vise and it's worked great. It's got two axes to work from, um, so you can level your bow out just nice and get everything the way it should be for like squaring up your sights and everything else. Those are probably the two biggest ticket items that, that cost me the most. And the bow press itself probably cost the most and it was the last thing I got. Like I mentioned, I used to use that, that bow, bow master press for such a long time and it worked great. Uh, it, you got to choose how to spend your money wisely, especially in today's economy. We don't need to be buying everything all at one time. Start out small, build upon it. The third item that I use the most would probably be the arrow saw, which is just a simple Weston arrow saw. I maybe only cut in like four to four to seven dozen arrows a year. So this model works well for me. It's not a high powered, no diamond bit, all that type of jazz, and it works good. Okay, as far as like the organizational stuff, um, the first piece of organization I ever bought for my shop at the time was this little tray unit. And actually, I need to get another one because this thing is just getting crammed full of stuff. This is where I'll keep my knocks, where I'll keep um, my field points, lube, uh, wax, thread. It's just where all the little trinkets and bits go inside of here and it works great. I wish it was double the size now. In the beginning, when you first start doing this, you'll notice like, oh man, I've got tons of space, or I got tons of drawers, tons of room for organization. And then you just kind of keep buying, keep buying, and do the American thing and just get more things than you really need. And <clears throat> now I need more storage space for all that stuff. And then I bought myself a little pegboard here. And this is where I'll hang up all my fletchings now for the most part. I'll hang some other things like, Oh, D-loop material or some old sights or any broadheads that I got in the package still laying around. 
So that's my two organizational pieces. My biggest and quickest and easiest organizational piece that I get made fun of all the time for is freaking nails and boards, dude. Chick, whoever's watching this. Nails and boards, they work great. Hold up. Actually, I do have one more piece of organization that I've been doing for a while and I always kind of forget about it because it's up above me. And it's using pegboard again. Uh, actually, I had to drill out these holes a little bit bigger to get just standard diameter arrows in there. And some of them I still can't fit. But, you know, this is a good way to kind of keep things up above you out of a working space, as well as using clamps. These are like kids arrows. Or I've got some recurve arrows up here. And keep it up in the rafters. And the area I'm working under right now is a loft I built a few years ago. So I kind of had all this in mind before I built the loft of what I was going to put underneath. So I had some forethought behind it. Yeah, that I think is all of my storage stuff. We've got we've got the little uh, organizer, some pegboard, pegboard, nails. Now, as far as fletching arrows go, I am a, a huge fan of the Blitzenberg. Um, I've used some other ones. I've used I've got a couple of the Arizona Fletchers up here. I've used those as well, but I feel like with the Blitzenberg and get really detailed on it. I know there's some other ones out there that are just as nice quality and just as detailed as the Blitzenberg. But the Blitzenberg has been my fan for, or I've been its fan for quite some time now. So if you're looking to get one, totally recommend that. Uh, as far as tools go, you will collect a plethora of Allen wrenches as you, you know, get new items like new sights always come with more Allen wrenches. But I do have this T-handle set that I really enjoy. Um, that's It's just worked out well. You don't need it. A lot of this stuff that I've got now Again, I didn't start off with it, so I haven't, I can't say that I've needed it. The line between wanting and needing gets blurred so bad. As far as tools, let's look at more tools. I've got a set of pliers for uh, tightening your D loops or setting in some brass knocks. Um, I've got a serving jig, so like I could, I could fix any serving on a string I need to. We've got a level for setting up sights with accesses. Surprisingly enough, forceps do come in handy once in a while, uh, either for tying knots or just trying to grab some thread. Some razor blades, a small screwdriver, lighter. Lighters are important. I have a small tape measure. I do have another um, squaring method people use for either like squaring up their, their um, dropaways or squaring up their limbs, like their limb pockets and measuring the distance of their limb pockets. Um, <clears throat> this tool, the ratchet was used for the Bowmaster press just to kind of speed up the process. I got a little cheap arrow fletcher, which I need to get a new one. That sucker's worn out bad. Uh, what else? Another lighter, a file, which I don't really know what I use that for. Another razor blade. Uh, that's a handful of tools that you'll just come across needing at some point. Not like right away, but you're gonna be like, dang, I kind of wish I had one of those. We also got down here a little scale. Uh, this is handy for figuring out, you know, the grain of your overall arrow or, or tips or broadheads. I keep all my glue selection basically right on the table. Um, the Instabond is a black eagle for like the inserts. Then we've got a whole bunch of different glues, the AE Max, the blue glue, uh, and then some more Instabond from Black Eagle. The oil is non scented oil. I like to put the oil, like I'll dab it on top of like the screws, um, just so that, you know, these are steel where everything else is aluminum so they can show a little surface rust and I'll just rub a little oil on there. Okay, I think, uh, so we've covered some of the main pieces of equipment that I've got between the vise, the press, the arrow saw. Uh, then we kind of covered some of my organization with like cool stuff like this. That's generally speaking, most everything you're gonna need in a DIY at home bow shop. Granted, we've got thread and we've got all these other little things that you might need as you go. But if you're gonna start off with your own bow shop or your own, if you wanna start working on your own stuff, first thing I would buy is the bow press. The Bowmaster is a good start. That's what I started with. The second thing I would buy is probably a bow vise because a bow vise gives you basically a third hand. And also the thing a bow vise does is it allows you to square everything up properly. So you can get your bow square on both axes, straight like this and side to side or whatever. Um, and that way, when you're getting a newer, nicer bow sight, uh, one with multiple axes, you can square that up properly. 
and you can do that all from home. And then, you know, the last thing as far as big equipment I would say you would ever need is a bow or uh, an arrow saw. An arrow saw is way down on the list for me. Uh, you can order arrows cut, you can go to a bow shop and get them cut. Those are pretty simple things that, you know, you don't have to have any doubts if somebody's capable of doing it. Um, as far as everything else, it's a big learning curve to all of this stuff. Like, I'm a tinker. I love to tinker. I'm out here 90% of the time just tinkering around with something I don't need to even be touching because it's just something I like to do. You know, learning how to tie a peep sight in or a Bomar button or a D loop or, you know, what you can do to your drop away rests and everything else, you know, that's all something you learn as you go. So don't feel rushed like you need to get everything all at one time. Start simple, start small. Oh, I just realized one thing, paper tuning. I put this up here. And that'll hang a target on the wall. You can do that too. Look at those tears. Those are horrible. But yeah, that's another little thing. Basically, I think what I'm trying to get at now is that like you can make any space work that you want to make work. Uh, like when we go out west, I'm going to be taking that Bowmaster bow press with us because if something happens and I need to get in, uh, like a peep flies out and I need to put in a new one for somebody, I'm not going to try and jam a, a string splitter in there with full pressure on that string with the potential of cutting that string. So we're gonna need a little bit of tension to take off of that string. And that's what that Bowmaster can do for you. If we're talking about some things I wish I had still to this day, I would say number one would be heat. Uh, in this area, I have no heat. So um, when I'm fletching arrows in the winter time, I go into a tiny little room that's heated, but this is an old barn, um, no heat. I, eventually I'd like to build a wall and put a wood stove in here, but that's number one I wish I had for heat. Number two, what I wish I had, I wish that this bow press was on um, like a rolling tool bench that I could mount on top of it so that I could roll it around wherever I wanted to roll it around. Really this spot back in here is pretty open and I need a little bit more light, but I would like to put that on a rolling tool bench, put it back out of the way so then all this is open up in the front. So let's finish this, all, this whole video off real quick here. What I have in my bow shop, it's a small little area. I've got a bow press. I've got a bow vise. I've got an arrow saw. I've got a plethora of items for arrows between fletchings, components, glues, and, and inserts. Um, I've got a decent amount of organization. I've got thread, nails on the wall for more organization, an arrow organizer, a uh, paper tuner area, and yeah, that, and I've got some fancy little mats that are nice to have on this wood. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you got any more questions about the bow uh, shop in here, uh, feel free to drop them below and I'll definitely answer them after the fact. I'll uh, help you guys out any, any way I can. So I appreciate you all watching. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to uh, check this video out. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya. <laughs> appreciate you. Always appreciate.